Hey guys, it's Fossil Dad coming to you live from the Amylite factory mine here in Alberta, Canada. And with me is, uh, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Allison Hepburn and I'm a professional geologist hailing from the Calgary area. Allison has joined us down at the mine and if you've been following our episodes, which I'm sure you have, uh, she's actually spent an entire day at the mine. So <laughs> Allison, is, what can you tell me about some of the stuff that you saw at the mine today? Well, I saw some beautiful fossils with some incredible color. Um, yeah. Every single color of the rainbow. Wow. And yeah. also some wow. really unusual ones with the green coloration yep. inside. Yep. We uh, saw several nice pieces that actually show the internal structure <laughs> of the uh, ammonite. Yes. Um, unusual preservation to yep. get the beautiful coils in um, chambers inside yep. the yep. coils. Yep. And they have color on them. Yes. which is also yeah. extremely rare and while I was out uh, walking the hillside yeah. I found the most incredible baculite <sighs> just yeah. look every single color of the rainbow yes. in there just stunning so Allison <laughs> has proved me wrong because I told you guys that I have never seen baculite here at the property but thankfully Allison came down here to prove me wrong I've never <laughs> seen that that's actually a very good find here uh, it just expands on the significance of the property we have here uh, Allison, can you help explain the difference between the brown screed that I'm finding up top and the dense black screed that I'm finding at the bottom? What, what is the significance of that and how does that affect the color uh, and the preservation of the specimen that we find? Well, the darker black stuff is much finer grained and it would have been deposited in very low flow conditions at the bottom of the ocean. So in, in layman's terms, what do you mean by finely layered? So do you mean just it's, dense or...? or? It, it's very dense, super fine little grains. Yeah. You're not going to pick it up and go, oh, I see chunks of rock. Okay. So okay. Yeah. think of um, an ocean and you get fines that settle down. Mm -hmm. You get big sand that settles down close to the shore yep. because the wave action is pretty turbulent gotcha, yep, and yep. you get sandbars moving in and out. Mm -hmm. But where the water's pretty quiet, it's almost like dust falling in your house, sure. right? It sure. just happens. Mm -hmm. It goes down to <clears> the <throat> bottom and it accumulates. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you don't find much that actually lives in there, but right. it is a fantastic place to find mm -hmm preserved ammonite shells. Wow. Because if these ammonites yep. died in the shallow water, yep. their shells would be in the surf zone and they would right. be sand right now. Sure. Okay. So yep. totally useless to us. Mm, sure. You wouldn't find that. It's no that, preservation at all. It's, no, it's obliterated. No, that sand it's could be down, you know, in Texas or yep. Wyoming, anywhere <laughs> sure. along where the sure. western interior yep. seaway went. Sure. Sure. It would move all the way along. Wow. So we're looking um, for the, the really dark marine shales shows us that we're in the right yeah. environment yeah. and that we're getting um, good preservation there yeah. 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 and groundwater moves through the yeah. shales and if it encounters one of these shells yeah. Yeah. It, it can't go through it so it goes over top goes around and it forms over time this fantastic concretion so that's how the concretions are formed around it yes so just natural yes. groundwater. And a concretion yeah. can be formed around anything, like um, yes. a small pebble or a little chunk of fossil bone. You, you showed me this morning. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been, I've, been, I've been here for three seasons and I've always encountered things, of course, uh, that, that I don't know what they are. I, again, these beautiful, uh, what I thought were uh, pulverized clams. Uh, but uh, uh, Allison has completely blew my mind this morning that I didn't know that a concretion can form out but, of something as small as a simple grain or yeah. something like that. Uh, it actually blew my mind yeah. today. I was, it, it's uh, going to affect where the water flows. Sure, And sure. it's the same if you put a pebble on your sidewalk and it's raining, right. watch the water pattern. That's a good it hits point. that and it goes down and it forms a V. So the water is actually carrying the sediments to form it? Or yeah. how, do, how does yeah. that work? Is it and here we have ironstone. Those concretions so the, are that, super that is hard. The, exactly. It's so. water really, really rich in iron. Okay. Yep. And so as it flows around, it's putting a thin coating on. Mm -hmm. That took, you know, 
I don't know how long. <laughs> it can how be many millions, millions of sure. years. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, because things were, the groundwater was still flowing. Yeah. And, um, you know, in flood stage, you'd get a little more water flowing yeah. through there. Yeah. 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 But yeah. It, it goes around, and, you know, we like them not yeah. big rounded yeah. ones. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Chances are whatever was in the center was big and round. So right. you like kind of the pancake sized ones because right. that was the shape of the ammonite shell. Right, right. So not every single one will because Mother Nature, the the water flows around whatever is impeding it. That's very it. cool, wow. But the most thing that we had here were ammonites. Yes, So, yes, that's, um, And that's a good thing, that's a yeah, good thing. Absolutely, <laughs> you're in the right place. <laughs> you know, to, to close it off, just tell me, tell me an interesting, interesting fact that our viewers would never know about ammonite. Just so, something but, really interesting about them. That they're, they, you know, that spiral shape is just so prolific. We see it everywhere. So, is there something really interesting that most viewers won't know about ammonite that you could mention? Well, ammonites were incredible creatures. One of the most resilient creatures mm. oh, in the world. Oh, Go. My God. Wow, so wow. they had they evolved. Um, they their closest living relatives are an octopus, squid, or a cuttlefish. Gotcha. Um, even though they look like a snail, they weren't snails. So there's actually living relatives of yes. these guys that closest were- Closest living relatives. Closest living relative. Yeah. So wow. the, okay. the original ones, the, the first shape, they looked like a squid stuck in an ice cream cone. Okay, so yep. lots of yep. tentacles. Yes. And um, they, they were jet propelled just as these ones were, mm -hmm. because I don't, although they were probably the smartest creature, I don't sure. care how smart you are, you can't do the breaststroke if you've got 50 tentacles. Sure. Right? Sure. It, yes. You're just, yeah. Yeah. you're not yeah. Yeah. streamlined yeah. for yeah. that. Yeah. So they were probably very efficient, very streamlined. Think of a shark, how it moves through the water. Sure, sure. So sure. these guys would shoot backwards and they were chambered. They mm -hmm. could control um, how they rose and fell in the water so column as well. When you say chambered, so if, if we have tentacles coming out here, how, how does the how does the the specimen the ammonite protect itself when there's a predator around? Well, the the first thing when you hatch, if yep. you're in the ocean, yep. put a shell around you. So they're pulling the calcium and the carbonate out sure. of the water. Protection. But then as you grow, your home's a little too small. So I always say it's like moving to a bigger bedroom. You know, the siblings <laughs> start to leave yep. the house. Yeah. You're growing. Oh so, yeah, I I, yeah. I, know, I understand that. Yeah. Yep. So you're in the next bedroom. The end chamber is where they lived, the last chamber. But there was always enough room that they could pull all their tentacles in and they could shut a little mucus door. Kind of like an ostrich in the head thing, or ostrich yep. head in the sand, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, my head's buried, you can't see me. Um, they would still be visible to predators, but they wouldn't have all those tentacles waving out so, to attract the isn't visual. That something? So they literally retreated in their shell. Yeah, it, it offered them some protection. To the point where there was no tentacles coming out. No, if they had time to do that, isn't that something? they could pull in. The modern day chambered nautilus shares the same <laughs> body shape as our uh, Placentisaurus ones yep. here. Yep, yep. Um, it was a really good body shape, but between when they look like a squid and an ice cream cone yeah. and the shape here mm -hmm. in the rocks that are between 70 and 75 million years old, yeah. they experimented with a ton of body shapes. So 250 million years ago, there was a massive extinction mm -hmm. and 90% of the ammonoids went extinct. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. The yeah. other 10% evolved, they flourished, there were all sorts of cool shapes that were one shape like this, down, yeah, that's not very good. No, not very, <laughs> not very streamlined, <laughs> sure, it didn't, sure. Didn't move up and Evolution down. Evolution takes care of it, sure, There were sure. ones that were coiled up like this, so, you know, wow. you, good for wow. species identification, yes, however, yeah, yeah, yeah. not the best shape. No kidding. And then bam, 200 million years ago, there was another huge mass extinction and um, only one order of ammonites made it across. Which one was that, out of curiosity? Or... That one, I don't know the exact Fair which name, but then enough. they flourished. They evolved so rapidly. Huh. Ammonites <laughs> are found worldwide. They so, are? Yeah. So not, not just in, in Alberta, in no. Airpaw or anything? No, and you, ammonites with an N, the actual animal. Gotcha. They're so common in Europe that you can actually date rocks to within 100,000 years, 
which is a blink of the eye geologically. So you take the so, species and then you find out where the timeline is of absolutely. their evolution and then you can relate it yep. to you different... You know exactly how old those rocks <laughs> oh. are. So, and wow, that's okay. that's yeah. not necessarily something that we can do in this area. No, 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 fair so, enough. Yeah, yeah. But they started to evolve with that coiled shape and it's super hydrodynamic. They could scoot backwards in the water, yes. right? Yep. Very yep. little surface area. Yep. And um, with the chambers and the siphuncle that ran through, mm -hmm. they put their body gases in, they could move up, and body yep. fluids, they could move down. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And wow. uh. I have heard, I have not actually had the chance to see this, but I have heard that they have found fossilized ink in some places. So they wow. did this for the camouflage because there were things in the ocean that ate them. Sure. Were, were they, so, let's wrap this up, but was there, are they, were they meat eaters or were they plant eaters? What, what was, where did they go? Yeah. Where did they go towards? Most of them were carnivores. Carnivores? Yeah, so meat eaters. Okay. So okay. they yeah. would eat small fish, you know, lots of little tentacles. Sure. They could grab that. <laughs> um, some may have been plankton eaters. Okay. So, but they lived in the shallow waters because wow. think like a coral reef that grows in shallow water, yep, the yep. fish are at the reef. Yep, yep, so sure. that was the area they lived because that was most of their food. Wow, wow. Well, uh, Allison, thank you so much for joining me today at the mine. It was, it was great, it was great to have you here. I have learned so much today from Allison, uh, Paul, and Chris. Uh, this is all information, guys, that I wanna give to you with no holds barred access to the Amalite factory mine. Uh, stay tuned, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us. Take care. And thank you so much for having me because this was a fantastic oh, learning uh, experience for me and it completed the cycle. It's completely reciprocal. So, thank you very yeah. much, Allison. <laughs> thank Thanks, you. guys. Take care.